So we were wondering like how you guys actually met. <laughs> George, take it away. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we met years ago uh, through a mutual friend. Georgia um, was always friends with soccer girls because she knows like how cool soccer girls are. So oh my god! <laughs> so growing up, she maybe was I should take it from here. <laughs> um, so I mean, not to put words in Georgia's mouth, but growing up, she was a mediocre to elite soccer player in the Vancouver area. I'll let you. Oh my gosh! To where. Um, so she was like in the soccer world a bit and knew um, people in the soccer world. And of course, there's a lot of girls from Vancouver on the national team. So um, yeah, we met. I don't know what was it, seven, eight years ago. Through she was visiting some friends on the national team, and we had camp in Vancouver, and we had a brief like, "Hey, how's it going?" Um, but then nothing. Wait, I think I need to interject here. Yeah. <laughs> I think now is when I need to take it over. I was me, yeah, hanging out with um, uh, Carm, Carm Moscato, and we were, um, I was on the uh, retired, and uh, this, and Steph walks by, and like they were in camp, and um, and she comes down, and she's like, Carm, like my key's not working. And she was like a bit flustered, and um, she was like, yeah, not having a great day, I could tell. Um, maybe like a four out of 10, maybe for that day. And, for working um, hard, not just having coffee, that's why. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and she walks away and I actually was like oh my god like I actually said to myself like that's my dream girl but oh you knew so, say it again you knew right away I mean you know something yeah something spoke to me about about this like grumpy grumpy chick that was hanging out with or com coming in um <laughs> and asking Carm something and then uh she was obviously she was dating someone at the time so I like I got back home I did like a quick googling um I guess there was no Instagram back then I don't think there was actually I really don't think <laughs> there was or it was like very early stages yeah. very very early yeah. um so I did like a quick googs and then um like I ended it I was like okay she's cool but like I'm not gonna keep googling her because she's dating someone and like I just you just gotta move on <laughs> Um, and I did. I really did. And then, like, fast forward, what, to Rio, Steph, yeah, eh? yeah, pretty much to Rio. And, I mean, I had heard about Georgia, like, you know, she has a bit of a reputation in the Olympic world. So I had heard that, you know, she was at her third Olympics in her third sport and, um, you know, was this winter athlete coming into the summer athlete world. And <laughs> um, so... Yeah, it was the closing ceremonies. And as a soccer player, we are not in the village for like the entire Olympics. Um, so we don't really get to interact with any other athletes. So um, the closing ceremony was like a really big thing for us because like we don't do the opening ceremonies. And yeah, like I said, we don't really see any other athletes as we're in different cities. So I was just like so excited, number one, to see all of the other Canadian athletes, but then to actually see somebody that I like knew their name or even knew someone, I was just like, yes, I could go say hi to somebody. Um, so I saw her and, um, yeah, just went up and said, Hey, like, and then yeah, congratulated her as I, you know, I'm pretty sure you were wearing your medal or you had your medal with you. I think that's, yeah. And I said, you know, congrats on your medal. And, um, then I went off with my team <laughs> and then Georgia, you can take this. Well, next uh, I mean, yeah, we like, uh, just kind of connected a couple months later in Vancouver. Oh, oh, so. I was in the process of finding an agent and mm -hmm. I um so I reached out and I was like okay this may this might be a good opportunity to like you know slide in those dms yeah so I messaged Steph in August this was like a couple weeks after the games and I said hey I'm chatting with some of the Canadian agents like I know you're working with with Colin like I was just wondering like your thoughts on how that goes and I didn't hear from Steph for like like two months or something like ridiculous Steph. I mean, it was, I know hard to get, right. It could have been busy, busy girl. Oh yeah. So busy. It could have so been like two weeks. It could have been two weeks, but you know, who knows? It seemed like ages. And then she finally messages me and she's like, Hey, Oh my God, I have, here's my cell. Here's my, uh, Euro cell. Here's my address. Here's my American address. Here's my Canadian address. Like contact me at any time. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, 
what is this doing <laughs> me? It was just a bit bizarre and funny. And uh, after that, we, um, I mean, no thanks to Steph, I signed with an agent because she obviously got back to me months later. But uh, she did finally get back to me. And then we kind of just like started um, hanging out in Vancouver a couple months, uh, like in November or so. Um, and uh, I mean, I had to go skiing right away like that winter. So um, that was like just a bit tricky to like kind of stay in contact. But um, the following spring, I think we, yeah, we're official. Amazing. Do you remember your, what was your first date? Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, what's our first, oh, that we went to dinner at your friend's restaurant. Yeah, the, my friend owns a Greek restaurant in Vancouver and it's uh, like delicious food. And um, we went out there in Vancouver. Yeah. What's it called? <laughs> my sister lives um, in Vancouver. Anatoly Suvlaki. Okay. I think. I feel uh, like she's actually talked oh, about it before. Oh, no, it's amazing. The, the, the downtown one, I think, is just called Suvlaki, I believe, or is called Anatoly. It's, I think it's, I think it's called Anatoly. Yeah, I think it's called Anatoly. Um, anyway, yeah, great food and great a great food. night. I love it. Um, obviously, with everything going on right now, there's no like big celebrations for Pride or anything. So, how are you guys celebrating? Um, I have uh, started um, because basically the entire women's. Um, Peloton, they say, um, like for road cycling, uh, like all of our races are canceled this summer. My team um, is actually one of the few teams sponsored by a virtual uh, bike platform called Zwift. And um, the last couple of years, they've actually been like racing other pro women's teams like once a week um, uh, for a couple months, like in, in, a, in a season uh, um, around the world, actually on Zwift. So now more teams are getting uh, involved in it, obviously because there is no, um, as they say, IRL in real life um, <laughs> racing going on. So uh, Zwift actually, um, they actually uh, have brought on Steph as a as an, uh, an ambassador as well. Um, nice. So I'm actually doing a uh, like I'm leading a group ride um, tomorrow for Pride, um, and there'll probably be like 600 people on the ride, which is kind of cool. Um, I mean, the, the racing aspect is, is one thing that's like incredibly positive, obviously. I think it's just like given me a lot of structure in the last couple mm -hmm. of months. Um, but the other really cool thing that I have noticed about Zwift is um, when I hop on these rides with like hundreds and hundreds of people on it, it's truly a sense of community. And mm -hmm. I mean, pride or no pride, like it's really honestly bringing people together. Um, and I'm really excited for uh, tomorrow's casual pride ride. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you've been like staying in contact with your teammates and stuff too? Yeah, we'll race like probably once a week or more on Zwift. And we have another app that we are actually talking to each other because sometimes like you need verbal um, yeah. like, cute stuff in the race. Um, if you think of like gamers, like talking to each other, like that's what we're doing on a bike. It's hilarious. Um, so yeah, I'm like entering this whole virtual world and it like still... I don't know, it like rubs me the wrong way. And it also, I'm like happy about it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely like a little bit of a love hate, but more love for sure. Cool. Steph, what about you? Is there anything? Um, well, I am also leading You're a in pride ride <laughs> <laughs> next weekend. <laughs> um, because through quarantine and this whole COVID thing, I um, took up cycling and started riding my bike a lot more than I would have ever thought that I would. Um, if you asked me a year ago, if I would, if you would tell me the kilometers that I've ridden, if I would be able to do that. And a year ago, I would have like put money against myself, <laughs> I think. But uh, yeah, so that became something that George and I were doing together and um, something that I've kind of continued here a little bit doing like some recovery rides. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, okay. so I'll be leading a very slow paced coffee run <laughs> casual pride ride next weekend. Um, and other than that, like, yeah, I mean, obviously there's not many like um, big parades or events happening right now. Um, and I've, I mean, I think for me, I've never really been one to be super like out there, like really, I think throwing it out there. I've always just tried to like, I think every day of the year, just like be myself and not really treat any day any differently. And so I think like, 
I've always tried to be just like open and myself and proud of who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I've just like, I mean, I've gone to parades in the past, um, like when I was in college and stuff, but yeah, it's never really been something where I'm like, I don't know. I like feel like I need to go out and do like a big event or something. Yeah, totally. So how can people get involved with the ride next weekend then? Um, yeah, you if you're on Zwift, you just sign up and look for it. Oh, that's amazing. So it's really easy. Yes, Super. it's really easy. Yeah. And it's on I mean, Zwift? Yeah, Zwift, Z- Z-W-I-F-T. I mean, yeah, you have to have an account and then um, there's like events and you can, there's literally events to join which are either races or rides, um, like every 10 minutes, essentially, 15 minutes. Oh, that's great. There's, it's crazy. So you can just look, I mean, mine's at Saturday at 9, th- uh, 9, 9 a.m. Um, MST. Tomorrow? <laughs> Tomorrow, yep. Um, and Steph's, I think, is the following weekend. Cool. Well, we'll definitely have to try and promote it on our platforms. That's awesome. Cool. Um, and then we'll like, we'll, let's switch over to like some professional stuff. Um, so Georgia, you're obviously like a tri-sport Olympian. So for you, like, was it always cycling and skiing, like back to back, like summer and winter sports, or how did you get into both of them? Uh, no, not at all, really. I, I grew up as a ski racer. Um, I mean, I played many sports as, as a kid. Um, you know, I feel like I played many sports as I possibly could. And uh, I attest all of um, that, like me being able to do that to my parents, truly, like the support that they gave me was outstanding. And I really don't know how they did it with, with four kids, um, but they somehow managed. Uh, and yeah, I, I saw skiing as an opportunity that, I mean, I absolutely love to ski race and, and at about, uh, uh, 15, I had to make some tough, tough decisions back to, you know, my, um, professional, uh, career as a soccer player. Um, I had to drop that and put, put that aside. Um, and I worked my way up to the national team. Um, and then, yeah, represented, uh, Canada in the 2010 winter games in my backyard, which is a truly, I mean, very overwhelming and unbelievable experience to say the least, you know, being at home Olympics and your family and friends and being young. And it was incredible. Um, a lot of highs and lows, but, but really unbelievable, of course. Um, and then I saw, uh, and this other sport. And I was like, I think that has a bit more of my personality, um, all about it. And that was ski cross obviously. And so I switched a year after the games to ski cross and, um, not to say that I didn't, uh, it wasn't an easy transition. I had a lot of injuries of course, but, um, I was still totally in love with the sport and, and I uh, was really excited about it. And then, uh, during one of my injuries, actually, I, uh, I mean, probably I was on a little, um, you know, a couple Vicodin at the time, but um, I was actually watching the women's soccer team play in Vancouver and um, thought to myself, like, I-, I work so hard in the summer as an athlete. Um, like, why can't I do this? Like, why can't I become a summer Olympian as well? And I truly thought, like, if it doesn't happen, like, that's okay. Like, mm-hmm. if, if it doesn't happen, I'm just going to end up right where I am now. And that's representing my national team. And I mean, being very proud and excited about what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, uh, kind of fast forward a couple years, I dabbled into the sport of rowing for a summer. Um, but they wanted to invest in, in me and develop my skills, but they needed me 365 days of the year. And I yeah. said, thanks, but no. Um, and so I, uh, I literally just contacted cycling Canada and I, and I contacted like info at, um, we do a lot of bike tests as, um, skiers throughout our off season. So like, I knew I had like very strong legs, like as a skier, um, Mm -hmm. like it was my numbers were like weirdly like comparable to like world cup men, um, like bike tests, their results. So my strength and conditioning coach kind of kept on um, bugging and bugging me and saying like, you should pro- probably get on a bike as well if you want to. Um, and so I finally did. And yeah, um, I then made the team in a pretty short uh, timeline and uh, went to Rio um, and then hopped back on my, back on my skis. Like a lot of people kind of say like, how do you do it all? And how did you do three sports? But like, that's not the case. I did one and then I switched and I did one and then I switched and I like I folk through my experience with rowing, I learned that I need to focus a hundred percent of my efforts 
on one sport if I want to be anywhere near the top of the world in that particular mm -hmm. sport. I mean, however many thousands of hours people put in to perfect, perfect their craft, um, to just dabble in it was, I, I, I picked up from Rio that that, or rowing, sorry, that that wasn't going to happen. So um, I, through that experience, I was, I was very happy and, and learned from it. Um, and so, yeah, definitely um, focused all my energy on one sport at one time. That's great. Um, obviously, when I was watching the, the last dance documentary, how Jordan's body like really changed when he went from baseball to basketball. Do you find it's like that as well when you're switching between sports? Yes, yeah, Steph, what do you think? Well, I was just going to say my body changes just between off-season and on-season. Never yeah. mind switching sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, uh, definitely her body has changed. Um, the, the ski legs and ski bum are gone. <laughs> but, like skiers have butts and like I yeah. really like the butt and then I remember one day we're like in 2015 it was probably early 2016 training for the Olympics I like I honestly were, we were in a road season like a road camp probably like spring of 2016 and I remember looking in the mirror and I was like are you kidding my butt is gone like it oh is my god oh. It's, it, <laughs> and it's like that now unfortunately we just we're all quads like we're very quad dominant of course and um i would say they, you're much leaner as a cyclist as well just purely based on the amount of calories burned and also obviously being like a winter gravity sport of course yes you can, yeah. you can have your extra french fries <laughs> and <ice cream. laughs> yeah and i mean we do very little upper body training um in, in uh, cycling. Uh, I mean, having said that, some athletes focus more on their upper body than others, but I, I came into the sport with a, a, a considerable amount of strength needed for the sport of cycling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, muscle memory uh, is, is real. And I have had it for a long time in my upper body because of skiing. So I do very little to my upper body um, in terms of training with, with cycling. Uh, um, but so, yeah, like my arms get a bit smaller and my butt, I lose my butt. <laughs> it's crazy how much it changes. I mean, when I stopped playing hockey, my ass was gone. So I get it. <laughs> um, Steph, for you, uh, when you think of like Canadian soccer, like I instantly think of the women's team. So for you, like, what is it like representing that squad? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing to, I mean, number one, just like represent your country in the sport that you love. But um, I know that our women's team has quite a platform in Canada and, um, you know, with the uh, success of the past two Olympics, for sure, like it's kind of pushed us into the media a lot more than before. And um, I know that we've become one of the more um, like covered uh, women's teams in, in Canada. And I think it's a privilege that we um, embrace and it's something that we've like obviously the team has worked hard for and it's um, because of some some really great success but it's something that's um, I think I really take seriously in the sense of like I know that we have that platform and I know that we are a voice for so many young kids and of course it being a sport that so many um, kids grow up playing um, whether like recreationally or um, competitively um, it is a sport that so many people can connect to in some way or another. Like the amount of people you talk to, they're like, I used to play soccer. Like my grandkid plays soccer, you know, whatever it is, it's so many people can relate to the sport. And I think with that, um, you know, that there's a lot of eyes on you. And um, I think the, um, the platform that we have to be role models and to be a voice for, for a lot of young kids is pretty amazing and something that I definitely, um, you know, take pretty seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like, even right now with everything going on and like using your platform, um, do you feel like the obligation to use your platform? Um, I think in certain ways, like for sure, there's always pressure when um, issues come up, you know, if, if you don't speak out, you of course like hear about it. But at the same time, um, I think for me, I've always um, wanted to use my platform in a genuine authentic way and i've never wanted to use it as a, a um a means to an end and mm -hmm. so for me i've always kind of just like posted things that are genuine to me and um i guess like represent me in a very real authentic way 
Um, and I know everybody uses their platform in different ways. And um, that's just like how I've always wanted to use my platform and um, continue to try to do. Um, so I speak to the things that uh, mean something to me and where I believe that I need to stand up, whether it's for myself, my community or others in their community um, in support. And um, yeah, that's kind of my view on it, I guess. Yeah, and I know in the past you opened up about your mental mental illness and whatnot. Um, so for right now, like obviously some things are like everything is really uncertain. Uh, so would you suggest any like apps or meditations or anything that you're using right now to cope with everything? Um, yeah, I think you know I'm in a pretty um, lucky position right now where I'm able to like be back in my team environment and I'm training with my team on a daily basis. And, um, not a lot of people have reintegrated into their, um, so-called like previous normal life, um, in the way that I have right now. Um, yeah. but if I think back to even just like two weeks ago, three weeks ago when I was still at home, um, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, definitely like Georgia and I were um, meditating every second day. We were like setting aside time when we, when it was, um, when we did have more struggles and more, um, yeah, harder emotional days with that. Um, and we were using a lot of um, resources through Lululemon, which is one of my big sponsors. They are providing a lot of resources, but um, I think, for meditation like if you've never meditated before or are looking for resources um i think headspace is a really good one to start with um a lot of athletes use headspace i know it's really good with kids as well um it's a really super easy platform to use and um like you can meditate for two minutes a day or an hour it's totally up to you but i think that's a really good kind of starter one and i think a big thing is just like getting outside and getting fresh air and being in nature and being yeah, just like outside. I think Georgia and I really realized how important that was. And we were noticing at the beginning, we were like creating a really good routine in terms of like getting workouts done and we were cooking and I was puzzling and we were reading, we we're doing all these fun things. And then, you know, by the end of the day, we'd kind of realize like as much as we kept ourselves busy, we actually haven't been outside and that started to kind of take a toll emotionally on us. So I definitely think like, um, of course, still following like the the guidelines in terms of physical distancing and, um, you know, wearing a mask when needed to, um, I th still think getting outside and getting fresh air is super important for mental health. Okay. Just, yeah, to, clarify, I couldn't agree more. I, just to clarify, it happened like one day where we didn't go outside. <laughs> by accident. It makes a difference though. It, it, it seriously is. does. Yeah, yeah. It's big. Um, I feel like, so zoom only gives us a 40 minute time limit. So okay, let's get cracking. Yeah, and I don't know how much longer we have on this, but short I'll just ask you a few, short a few more a few more questions. Um, <laughs> so obviously, you guys are long distance right now. So do you have any tips or tricks for people that are doing relationships long distance? Ooh, Ooh. tips or tricks. Ooh. Uh, try not to be late when um, you know your girlfriend says like, "Let's chat at this time," because that happens sometimes. <laughs> Um, no, I think I'm in all seriousness, I think I'm, you know, uh, I like open communication is obviously very, very, very key. And, um, just like understanding each other's schedule, you know, we're both athletes. So we kind of, we really understand each other, um, in that regard versus like if, an, if an athlete is, you know, dating someone that has a nine to five job, like that would be, I think even more challenging. Um, but yeah. I think just like understanding each other's schedules and you know it might you might only have like five minutes to talk like you know at a certain point but to take advantage of that and I think to see their face is like brings me happiness for that five min five minutes um and again at the on the flip side like carving out time to to talk for more than that obviously and you sometimes really have to like work your actual your schedule around you know talking at 8 30 at night and and making mm -hmm like planning that and um, because like going, I think so many days like without, like just with little five minute chats, like also is a bit detrimental to, to your relationship. So yeah, I think it's being aware and planning. Yeah, totally. I, I get that. that. Yeah. And I think with that, we've like, I mean, we haven't done it yet. We've actually been trying to do it, but 
Um, something that's kind of like happened through COVID is so many people are playing like online games with friends now mm -hmm. and like meeting virtually with friends. And I think that's something Georgia and I talked about where we said like, if, you know, when we're doing distance and like the conversations are not necessarily getting stale, but at times you're just like, what's new? And you're like, well, not much. Like I had training again and then I made myself dinner again. Like when you are in a very repetitive, repetitive environment, those conversations, it's like, you're trying to like say things or like get the intriguing information out and it's not always there. And so we've like talked about, you know, we, we can do that as well. Like, so that every night we're not just FaceTiming and talking about the same thing over and over. Same like, one night, let's just get on face, FaceTime and like play Bananagrams together mm -hmm. or let's, you know, play a game online together where um, we're making memories instead of just like chatting. So um, that's definitely something that we've thought about that we can introduce into our relationship, not just into like when we chat with friends online. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that a ton with my friends too. Um, I feel like we might only have room for one more question. So I just wanted to ask you guys about Project Athlete and if you can just tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, Project Athlete um, <clears throat> started with uh, Steph and I, I think just kind of having a lot, of, like having some conversations and um, realizing that as uh, mature athletes, uh, we don't need to date ourselves here, but um, mature athletes kind of coming towards the end of her career, um, we have both realized that like hands down, people take themselves way too seriously. Athletes and uh, I mean, the gen pop, if you will. And so we uh, created, um, yeah, Project Athlete based off not taking yourself so seriously and seeing the power of, of, of your strength in, in vulnerable moments. So, you know, if you're making fun of yourself for, you know, like rolling over a soccer ball or getting, getting megged or, you know, certain things like that, um, we found humor and um, strength and, and power in that. So um, thus came Project Athlete. That's yeah, awesome. And I, think it's, I think to piggyback off that, like the name coming from um, being able to like see yourself as a project and ever evolving and that none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes and those mistakes are what like um, create like the growth mindset and have us like push for growth because you want to keep getting better. But the only way to move forward from those mistakes is to be able to, to take it lightly and kind of laugh at yourself um, and like then push forward to keep growing. So I think it's about seeing yourself as a project and knowing that we're all ever evolving and we're all changing. Um, and we're all kind of like on this journey together. Yeah. Awesome. Um, actually, I think we have one more question. So um, I want to ask about your dog, Rio. <laughs> um, where is he? Yeah. Where is he? Is he with you? Um, he is upstairs um, because he's obsessed with um, our tenant. Um, <laughs> give him all the love. So he's in her bedroom at the moment. He's here. So I can so get him. I just, yeah. I mean, please do. Can you get him? <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to leave yeah. her back in Calgary. So this is going to be exciting for me to see him. I'm excited. I'm staying at my mom's right now and she, uh, like obviously our dog growing up is here and it's been the best thing ever. Waking up to her every day, she's so cute. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, you're so heavy. Oh my God. Ah! He's like a 40 pound dumbbell. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is little Rio. Hi, Hi buddy. Rio. Hi Rio. Oh my gosh, what a freaking cutie. He's so heavy. His ears. He's so cute. How old is he? He's um, he's a grumpy old man, but he'll be a young spry four in a couple months. Oh, love it! Happy <laughs> early birthday, buddy! <laughs> no, he's he's the best. He um just pretends to be a grumpy old man sometimes. <laughs> um, and then one more thing: your sourdough bread. This is more of a personal question. Let's hear it. Because what what's your secret? Is it the starter? Is that what it is? I'm wondering if I have any. Uh, no, it's not the starter because I have made I've made sourdough uh, that has risen and tasted unbelievable with actually starter that failed the float test. I shouldn't be telling people this, but I know I have. Um, I just got really like frustrated one time and I was like, screw it. I'm just going to try to do it. And it, it like rose, oven spring, all that was awesome. Good bubbles, good crumb. Um, I mean, I can like 
talk to you about this later. Uh, but uh, it's like the kneading, it's, the, it's not kneading, but like the process of what you do in between in the bulk phase, I would say is the most critical. Yes. Okay. And the bulk phase starts like when you add your, uh, after you add your salt, that's, and then it sits out on the counter for however many hours before you put it in the fridge, which is proofing. So I would say the most in, the critical uh, time is like the process and what you do in the bulk phase. How did you get into making sourdough bread? We were uh, last January, or sorry, last, um, oh God, what months was I in? Yeah, January, February stuff yeah. or December? Yeah, yeah. this yeah. past January, like five yeah. months ago, yeah. Yeah, um, we were in New Zealand. My team was training in New Zealand and we were preparing for world champs. So we were living in a house and there was seven girls and um, we cyclists take, take their food very seriously. Like we train hard and then we come home and make like gourmet meals. Um, and so, and we were in one place for a certain amount of time. So we um, honestly just talked about it and some girls had made it previously. So we got a Dutch oven. We got someone got, someone gave us a starter, like a local cyclist um, in New Zealand in the town that we we're in. And um, we kind of just started dabbling. I actually like was a bit, um, uh, deterred or uh, scared actually to start and my teammates were starting and then like maybe two weeks in I was like okay let me give this a go and then I was hooked <laughs> I know it's like my sister does it and I feel like it's just like quite the hobby you just become addicted to it. like you want to there you can it's like um it's almost like perfecting a craft like in your sport you like in cycling for example it never gets easier. You just get stronger. Like you, you, you just have, you can't, you have to keep working hard. You know what I mean? So I think like, it's like this never ending, you know, the best loaf you're, it's, it's always going to change and you're always going to try to strive for that. And it just gets better and better. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Okay. Amazing. I feel like that's all we got time for. So thank you guys so much for doing this. I really appreciate you taking the time. No you're very problem. welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, of course. And good luck in the cup later this month. Thank you. We'll be cheering you on. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll hopefully join the ride next weekend and maybe tomorrow too. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, okay, Carrie. See ya. See ya.